So I'm uh, very glad that the previous speaker uh, corrected some um, myths uh, about her own past, because um, I had read in the newspaper all, all of the glowing things about her accomplishments, but I still think she must be pretty terrific. Um, but I'd also like to correct a couple of misunderstandings about Eco Village. And the first one has to do with our name. And I just want to make sure everybody understands it's Eco Village. I've been told that some people in other parts of Tompkins County refer to our community as Ego Village. <laughs> and uh, although we do have a few egotistical types up there, um, most of us are, are pretty normal, I think. And uh, that's the reason why I also want to disavow um, an even more extreme term. Um, I've also been told that a few people refer to our community as Frico Village. Um, but um, actually, we're pretty boring uh, if you're looking for a high-end counterculture with all kinds of wild parties and drugs and all whatever it is that you think goes on in communes and income sharing and everything else. Um, and Eco Village was designed and continues to attempt to be a kind of laboratory for examples that might be useful for regular middle class Americans to lower their footprint or shrink their footprint. Now, I know the American middle class is kind of teetering right now, but even so, um, this is one of the few groups in the world that has the greatest per capita use of things and um, reusing, recycling, um, and so forth are certainly part of uh, our struggle to get the footprint uh, shrunk down. And so one of some of the things we try to do at Eco Village, uh, we do them in an individual way, but also in a kind of community-oriented uh, way. So I'm going to try to tell you just a few examples, uh, and um, hopefully some of these might be useful to think about, um, either for individuals or um, for uh, other neighborhoods or communities. Now, one of the ways that's become very common these days to measure the um, footprint of humanity on the earth is what is called the ecological footprint, um, a, a sort of a mathematical device developed uh, in the 1990s by a man named Matisse Wackernagel at the University of British Columbia. And it is um, the total amount of Earth's surface area that you need in order to support your lifestyle. And so if we add it all up um, and look at all of the uses that all of the world's people are making, we find, unfortunately, that we're actually using more of the Earth's surface than exists. Um, and, of course, the only way to do that um, is that we're using resources in some areas faster than they can replenish themselves. And so the ecological footprint is telling us um, that uh, we're getting into dangerous uh, territory. And this graph, which is similar, just shows the components of the ecological footprint. Um, and you can see that energy use is a huge uh, portion of it. And sort of everything else um, in terms of materials uh, is the uh, other major component. And there's an official uh, quotable definition um, the area of productive land and water ecosystems required to produce the resources that the population consumes and assimilate the wastes that the population produces. Now, the United States ecological footprint per person in 2010 was 9.7 hectares or 24 acres. A uh, hectare is 2.47 acres. Um, an acre is approximately eight-tenths of a football field, so um, a hectare is approximately three football fields. So three football fields times 9.7 is the average amount of the Earth's surface that's required to generate the uh, necessities and, uh, for Americans. Here at uh, the Eco Village at Ithaca, we've been able to get it down to 44% of, of that value. However, 
we're still way too high at Eco Village. Also, um, we're 136% uh, overshoot. Um, the United States average is 439% overshoot, and the world average is now, as you saw, above, so it, it turns out to be 51%. The years vary slightly, but I don't think it has too much significance. We're a community living on 175 acres, two miles west of Pete's gas station, um, up on right off of Route 79, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, we have about 162 people, and uh, we have 60 households. We're about to build a third neighborhood with 40 more households and approximately 80 to 100 more people. And we have two neighborhoods and a third neighborhood to be built, but we also have a nonprofit organization um, called EVI Inc., which is sponsored by the Center for Transformative Action at Cornell. And um, that organization is our kind of outreach organization to the community and anyone else farther than Tompkins County who will listen to us or uh, come to our website. And this is our mission statement, uh, recently so somewhat revised. And if we want to look at Eco Village, um, I think to see how we're trying to shrink our footprint, we can break it down into these three categories of land use, building design, and community practices. So I'm gonna give a few examples from each of those areas. Now, the original plan for the 175 acre uh, plot that Eco Village rests on was the traditional American suburban design. And this is the actual plan that was made before the um, uh, company uh, either went bankrupt or pulled out. Uh, uh, and it was 150 homes, lots of driveways, lots of yards, um, and lots of roadways, and 10% open area. And instead, uh, this is an aerial view showing how our two neighborhoods, this is, there's our house there. This is our frog, or first residence group uh, which was um, built in 1995, and then our second neighborhood song, which was built in 2003, and the new third neighborhood will be over here. But you can see that we've clustered the houses uh, together, and this allows us um, to uh, leave a lot of uh, land in a natural state or to use it for food production. And one example, of the benefits of the way that we've designed our land use is that we use a lot less water per person than the typical American household. Uh, comparing us with the New York State average, you can see that um, we only use 29% as much water. Now, um, one reason for this is, that is, me I should say, metered water, water that you have to pay for, uh, water that has to be purified even though it's maybe not gonna be drunk, right? But um, one reason is that we don't have a lot of, of lawns. We have a lot of forest and meadowlands where nature itself simply takes care of, of watering. Um, an another reason is that a number of households have rain barrels. Um, and um, we're hoping at some point to move towards gray water recycling, which would make us even more efficient. But there's some bureaucratic complications in, in that. Um, our building design, which I'm gonna show you a few examples of, of what the designs are in just a second, uh, has made it possible um, for us to use a lot less natural gas and electricity. And there's um, some of the figures. Now, the reason these figures are kind of different is that the usage is, is a combination of things like how many people are in a household how big is the house? So depending on which kind of thing you're looking at, you get a different number. I would say the weakest area, as you can see, is the per square foot area, which is in some ways the most comparable across different houses and households. So what this shows is that despite um, quite a bit of effort, um, it's been difficult to lower the per square foot um, BTUs, um, and, and this is, Here's, here's what we do. We have smaller houses. 
Um, super insulation, the walls are twice as thick as average. There's, they're two by sixes with furring strips, so there's almost eight inches of thickness to the walls rather than the typical four, four and a half. Um, and uh, all the homes in Eco Village are duplexes, so we share one wall. Um, we have south facing triple paned uh, windows with CO2 in between the two sets of, of paint, the middle and, and the two outside panes. Um, and in our uh, neighborhood, we have a district heating system so that um, eight houses are on one furnace and we deliver the heat from the furnace to each of the houses uh, with hot water. Now, district heating is much more widely used in, in Europe and they're getting some of the same kinds of benefits from it. Um, this, this is a, a photograph looking out towards the south and you can see how uh, the very large windows um, bring in uh, a lot of, of solar gain even on a, a cloudy day when that picture was taken. We also, one day we were talking about um, what could explain our lower electricity use since we have all electric stoves and we do use a lot of electricity for cooking and then somebody sort of said, well maybe it's because we have these big windows we don't have to turn light bulbs on as much and it could be that that's part of it. We don't have total detailed intricate scientific research on every aspect of our community. More, more can be done I think, we hope. We use those same windows um, to keep them from getting too hot inside our houses in the summer. Um, we have trellises and we let nature do a lot of the cooling for us and through these um, vines that um, cover that and, and keep it cooler. And we also engage in a lot of community practices that we use to try to shrink our energy and material usage footprint. We have three times weekly voluntary community dinners that are attended by approximately a half um, of the households on a, re on a normal basis, regular basis. And if you think, um, for example, 30 people or 30 households come to dinner, but only one person had to go shopping. So only one car drove downtown and drove back with whatever we had to buy that we couldn't get off our own land. Um, instead of 30 stoves uh, being heated up, maybe three or four stoves. So we, while we haven't ever had a quantitative study done of this, I think it's reasonable to say that community dinners, whatever else they might do, they are also help to reduce uh, the, the footprint. We're all on, almost all on email constantly um, and uh, so many emails come in that if you ever think about moving to Eco Village, you should be sure that you love to read tons of emails every day. So <laughs> otherwise, you better live somewhere else, I'm sorry. Um, but a lot of the emails are requests for rides downtown and people usually get them within 10 or 15 minutes. Um, because we live in this tightly packed neighborhood, it's kind of, and we see, a lot of us see each other three times a week at dinner, talk to each other all the time. Um, we kind of get to know each other and that, that isolation that so many American neighborhoods have uh, breaks down so it's easy to share things and trust people that they'll return them, although it doesn't always work. Um, we uh, share a lot of gardening equipment and other things. Um, people do also send out emails asking for, a, you know, cup of sugar or some baking soda, all that kind of stuff. We have a fair number of on-site businesses, um, many of which uh, uh, help to reduce travel from the customers, at least the ones who are at Eco Village. Um, we have two organic farms uh, on the site right now, and in the summer we get a, a lot of our own food, including food for the community dinners and um, as Lynn mentioned, the CSA uh, phenomenon, which is very extensive here in uh, the Ithaca area. We also have our own local CSA. You can walk over to the farm and pick up your share. And um, <clears throat> we, um, we sometimes uh, have work parties over there. We have a, our own uh, reuse room, our own local reuse room. Um, and I guess this is just our local example of, of this important idea which is now also becoming more widespread throughout uh, Ithaca. And most recently I thought I'd tell you about one of the innovations that we did which made use of our commitment 
to shrinking our footprint um, and also the fact that we have a lot of mutual trust in the community. And that was um, the recently built solar array, which for our neighborhood, the first residence neighborhood, is um, out in an area where it's not, it doesn't, isn't very well drained. It isn't really good agricultural land. It's a few hundred square feet. Um, and, and this array is now already producing about 52% of the electricity. Photovoltaics are carbon neutral in the sense that they produce electricity without any carbon dioxide byproduct. However, the manufacturer of the original equipment does have what's called energy or embedded energy in it. And um, one of the people who helped develop this, um, Jeff Gilmore, one of our residents, uh, helped me find this source. Um, apparently, there's some research that indicates that um, in, in fact, um, this is a kind of a carbon negative way of producing energy and in about 12 to 36 uh, months, you actually pay back the um, energy um, byproducts in the original construction of the, of the materials. But the way we did this was to mobilize financial resources in the community, we turned our housing co-op into a housing co-op dash electricity co-op. Uh, all of which is legal in New York State. And um, we um, lent ourselves the money um, in order to purchase the equipment and pay the laborers who uh, set it up. And now we're paying ourselves back by paying our electrical bills. And it's, it runs at approximately $22 per household per month. So um, it's something that I don't know how replicable it is in other communities because we, because we are a housing co-op, we already have a cooperative billing system um, the way you would in a condo setting where you get billed every month and pay into a capital reserve fund and other funds that are needed to, to maintain the property itself. And that same billing system lends itself directly to managing the finances of the co-op. So a neighborhood doing this would have to set up an, a separate uh, financial um, billing system. Uh, however, it's not impossible. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, some communities around the area uh, might pick up on this idea. Several people have asked us about this and I think are looking into the possibility. Because the outcome is um, that in 15 years, we'll have, for that 52% of our electricity, it'll be free once, once the photovoltaics are paid for. We don't have to pay for the electricity that comes out of them because there's no other cost associated with. It's just sunlight hitting electrons on, on, those, um, on those panels. So um, that just says the uh, same things I was saying. And we also were able to install, although it's still not totally set up, um, our own local monitoring system. Since we're generating our own current, we can study it and plot in for each household, can look at its own electricity use um, and find out what time of day you're using it. Um, and you can also decide, it's like having a smart meter in every house. In fact, that's what it is exactly. Um, some European countries that have started doing this have found that when people know how much electricity they're using um, at certain times a day, they tend to reduce it because they're paying more attention to it. And we're also going to look into ways that you can figure out which of your appliances, although we kind of generally know, you can actually study it more quantitatively. And um, we've, despite the advances that we've made, um, we're not egotistical or freakish, as I said earlier. Um, we recognize that we have lots to learn. Uh, we're always trying to learn more. And uh, we hope to develop other uh, projects in the future. We have a free 90-minute tour on the last Saturday of every month. Just come up to Eco Village, park in the visitor parking lot, and you'll see the common house and people gather there. Um, last Saturday, which was the tour, we had 31 people. We get people from all over the world. Um, we get all together in our different tours around 500 people a year. 
And um, our tour guides are pretty well informed. Uh, a couple of them, not me included, but a couple of them are very entertaining and tell lots of jokes, if you can believe there are jokes about the history of an eco-village. Um, and um, so uh, come on up. Otherwise, if you just Google eco-village at Ithaca or go to ecovillageithaca.org. We have tremendous amount of material on our website, including lots of photos, a visual tour, a walking tour. You don't even have to go up there. Um, but it's better for your health if you come up and walk around. Uh, we welcome you to come. Uh, and um, I'm very glad later to answer any questions or hear comments or reactions from any of you about our experiment at EcoVillage. Thank you. <laughs>